Today, we are going to travel through time and visit Chinatown in Old Manila, the original business capital of the Philippines and in many ways still a center of commerce and business. In 1571, the Spanish conquistador Miguel Lopez de Legazpi founded Manila and built the fortified city of Intramuros after defeating the local chieftains called Rajas, who traced their roots to the Hindu kings who ruled these islands during pre-Spanish times. Our virtual tour starts in Binondo, the oldest and largest Chinatown in the world. This enclave was established in 1594 by Spanish Governor General Luis Perez das Mariñas for Chinese settlers and immigrants, whose growing number just outside the walled city of Fort Santiago in Intramuros fueled fears of a possible uprising. The colonial rulers wanted to transfer them to a settlement across the Pasig River from Intramuros, far enough from the fortress, yet also near enough for them to watch over their subjects. The Spaniards had another objective, to convert Chinese immigrants to the Catholic faith. Hence, the Dominican friars built the Binondo Church as the center of worship two years later in 1596. Originally constructed in the Italian Renaissance style, this minor basilica was destroyed by several earthquakes, bombarded by the British during their 1762 invasion of Manila, damaged severely by World War II, and continuously rebuilt to the structure that still stands today. Talking about the British invasion, a very little known historical fact is that English forces briefly occupied Manila and nearby Cavite during the years 1762 to 1764, an offshoot of the so-called Seven Years' War between Britain and France. Spain was aligned with France in this global conflict for territorial domination and Britain launched an expedition from India to attack the Spanish-held Philippine Islands. The British Armada was augmented by hundreds of sepoy troops recruited from Madras in India. But after their withdrawal from Manila with the signing of the Treaty of Paris, many of these disgruntled sepoy troops mutinied and refused to leave the islands. Eventually, they settled in different parts of Luzon, but mostly in the eastern town of Cainta, where they took native brides and sired many descendants characterized by their physical features and dark complexion. Because most Filipinos at that time were familiar only with Bombay, they took to calling these Indian immigrants as Bombay, even if very few of them actually came from that city. There is an interesting culinary anecdote that when their Madras curry supply ran out, these sepoys improvised with substitute ingredients that were locally available, replacing turmeric with anato and yogurt with coconut milk. The Filipino peanut-based stew called kare kare supposedly has its roots in Madras curry. The Binondo Church is across the Plaza San Lorenzo Ruiz, named in honor of the first Filipino canonized into sainthood by Pope John Paul in 1987. Lorenzo Ruiz was the product of Chinese immigrants who, being unaccompanied in their migration from Guangzhou and Fujian by Chinese females, instead intermarried with Filipinas and produced Chinese children of mixed race, or mestizos, the predecessors of today's Chinese Filipinos or Chinois. In 1889, a Spaniard named Manuel Perez Marchetti built a first-class hotel near the Binondo Church. Plush, elegant, and the first of its kind in the entire archipelago, the Hotel de Oriente had 83 rooms on three floors and a stable for 25 horses. 
perhaps the equivalent at that time of today's basement parking area. Its most famous guest, the national hero Jose Rizal, stayed briefly in Room 22 following his arrival from Hong Kong in 1892. During the American colonial period in the early 1900s, this premier hotel was home to many newly arrived American expatriates and their families. Sadly, this prestigious establishment was ravaged by fire during the liberation of Manila in 1945 and never rebuilt. A building owned by Metrobank now stands in its place. However, a faithful replica of this luxury hotel has been reproduced in the heritage resort of Las Casas Filipinas de Acusar in Bataan, some three hours from Manila. The street behind the Binondo Church is known as Calle Ongpin. Named after Filipino-Chinese merchant Roman Ongpin, who operated an art supply store there in 1915. The cramped and traffic-heavy street is home to many local bazaars, pharmacies, restaurants, jewelers, and apothecaries selling Chinese herbal medicine. Near the church is a 109-year-old store of Chinese delicacies called Eng Bitin. Founded in 1912 by a Chinese immigrant called Chua Chio Hong. In the same spot where the founder set up his first stall at the turn of the century, a now modernized establishment run by the family's third generation stands. It is famous for Hopia, a flaky pastry with fillings like mung bean, purple yam, and winter melon. There are over 25 variations of this favorite take-home present from first-time visitors to Binondo. Along the main thoroughfare of Quintin Paredes Street, which some locals still refer to with the old Spanish-era name of Calle Rosario, stands the buildings of many corporations which started life in Chinatown. Despite the relocation of their headquarters to newer business addresses like Makati, Green Hills, and the Bonifacio Global Center, they prefer to keep a presence there because of the fortunes that were built in that area during the 19th century and the early 20th century. Banks like Hong Kong and Shanghai Bank, Citibank and China Bank, and insurance companies like Sun Life, Manual Life, and Insular Life continue to maintain offices in this historical district. Today's Malayan insurance company had its humble beginnings as China Insurance and Surety Company in 1930 in nearby Gandara Street. This relic building, today a 33-story glass tower marvel in Makati, actually had its first building at number 55 Quintin Parada Street a three-floor structure built in 1934 to house its many business interests, which included its insurance agency representation at that time of the New India Assurance Company Limited. The old Zulik building in Binondo stands beside the Ui Chaco building on Plaza Moraga, which was built in 1914 in the Art Nouveau style by an American architect named Samuel Rowell. At six stories, it was Manila's first skyscraper at the turn of the century and was owned by a prominent businessman named Mariano Uichaco who supplied hardware to the U.S. colonial government in the 1900s. The building featured undulating balconies and elaborate wrought iron grills typical of its architectural style and its centerpiece was a domed corner tower with several clocks. During the liberation of Manila in 1945, the Japanese occupying forces used this tower to station machine guns trained on the advancing American forces on Jones Bridge. Today this historic edifice is occupied by the Philippine Trust Company, a bank founded in 1916 and the first local bank to engage in the trust business. 
Plaza Moraga was the entry point to Escolta, the main business avenue, the center of commerce, and a financial district that was once hailed as the Wall Street of Manila. Running parallel to the Pasig River, it was created in 1594, and its name originated from the Spanish word escoltar, or to escort, which referred to Spanish officials often accompanied there by their retinue of guards. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, the street was lined with Chinese bazaars and British and German drugstores and fashionable boutiques selling European merchandise. The electric tram line known as the Tranvia disappeared after the war to be replaced by the arrival of American automobiles. From 1898, when the U.S. defeated the Spanish Armada during the Battle of Manila Bay, up to the 1930s, many traders and businessmen from India arrived in the country. A second surge of immigrants came after the partition of India in 1947. Many were Sindhis and Punjabis, who became part of a middle class engaged in textiles, dry goods, jewelry, the retail trade, and money lending, and some of them set a shop along Escolta. The longest serving mayor of Manila from 1971 to 1986, Ramon Bagat Singh, was of Indian descent, his father having immigrated to the Philippines from the Punjab region. Up to the 1950s and early 1960s, the retail store Asandas, owned by an Indian merchant, was a favorite of parents in the summer who shopped there for students' uniforms and accessories in preparation for the coming school year. The Gopal family operated the Gem Gift Shop on Escolta, along with a handful of other Indian merchants like Bhagwan Sewani and Bombay Silk Supply. At the foot of the Jones Bridge, one stood the Art Deco themed building of the La Estrella del Norte. Started by the Jewish Levy Brothers in 1873, their store specialized in European watches, perfumes and jewelry, and moved from one address to another in Escolta until that iconic structure was built after the war. If you were a little boy in the late 1950s, and happened to pass by La Estrella del Norte, you would have been startled to see two burly Indians in turbans guarding the entrance of the shop. However, this location burned down and a newly constructed restaurant has now risen in its place. Moving along Escolta, one sees the Calvo building on the right, still operating since its erection in 1938. Built in the Beaux Arts style by the architect Fernando Campo, this was owned by the Hispanic Calvo family and is one of the few structures that survived the onslaught of the war. In the 1940s, the Calvo building housed a bank, several law offices, a radio station, and a sort of fountain called Luisa's that was a favorite of Manila's high society. One of the first office elevators with old-style steel grills was installed there in 1938, and this elevator remains in service to this day. The building is still actively tenanted, and a museum of vintage pre-war and post-war memorabilia can be visited at the second floor. The ground floor is now occupied by a drugstore and a seafood restaurant. Across the Calvo building, once stood the first shopping mall in the Philippines. Built in 1932 and designed in the streamlined modern style by the architect Andres Luna de San Pedro, the Crystal Arcade was a graceful structure described in history books as a cutting-edge glass palace. An air-conditioned commercial center, which was uncommon at that time, that housed upscale shops and boutiques, as well as the Manila Stock Exchange. It had a dramatic cantilever double winding staircase 
that open up to a spacious lobby with simulated skylights and glass. The elite of Manila was said to frequent this magnificent center just for the prestige of being seen. Sadly, this grand palace was ravaged during the Battle of Manila, demolished in 1961, and never reconstructed. And all we have to remember it by are archival photos of its former glory. Walking further, one sees on the left the Perez Samanillo building, now known as the First United Building. Constructed in 1928, it is another surviving specimen of the Art Deco motif so popular in that era. Also designed by the architect Andres Luna de San Pedro for the Spanish businessman Don Luis Perez Samanillo, the ornate structure with its glass facade and three ornamental towers once housed the French Embassy in room 329 and the Spanish Embassy in room 217. In the pre-war era, it hosted the famous Berg department store, owned by German brothers Ernest and Alfred Berg, who arrived in Manila in 1928. Berg's was considered one of the most modern stores at the time, selling imported merchandise and continuing to do so even during the Japanese occupation. The German citizenship of the brothers and the military alliance of the Axis powers amongst Italy Germany and Japan allowed them to do so. However, the Perez Samanillo building suffered damage during the liberation in 1945, although not as severe as others within the Escolta thoroughfare. Hence, the edifice was rehabilitated and continues to stand today as a landmark of a more genteel time. A virtual tour of Manila's Chinatown cannot be complete without a visit to Juan Luna Street. Named after the renowned painter responsible for possibly the most famous piece of art in the Philippines, the Spoliarium, which depicts defeated gladiators being dragged to the basement of the Roman Colosseum and which is now displayed at the Manila National Museum. The Juan Luna Street was, in Spanish times, the location of many carpentry and furniture shops, but during the American era, the headquarters of China Bank, Citibank, and the Hong Kong and Shanghai Bank were built there. In 1924, an elegant seven-story structure was designed by German architect Julius Gumbert in the Beaux-Arts style to house the headquarters of China Bank. This magnificent building is currently being meticulously restored to its former grandeur to celebrate the bank's founding in 1920. The Citibank building, designed by the American firm of Murphy, McGill and Hamlin and completed in 1923, reflected the architectural style of the New York headquarters of its mother company, the International Banking Corporation. It was converted into a BPO office called the Juan Luna E-Services Building in 2014, but unfortunately burned down in a recent fire. The HSBC Building, built in 1922 by American architect G.H. Howard in a neoclassical revival style, was a five-story concrete encased steel structure with a ground floor ceiling of 23 feet high and upper floor ceilings of 16 feet high. Its architectural features have led many to compare it to British colonial buildings in India. Companies like Sun Life of Canada, Smith Bell & Company, and in the post-war period, the William H. Quasha Law Office grace this historic location. It is gradually being repurposed into an office building and today, the elegant Grand 1919 Cafe in the ground floor is a fine example of adaptive reuse. Old Manila was a grand and beautiful metropolis that was said to be the Pearl of the Orient at the turn of the 20th century. Sadly, it has not retained its urbane style with the devastation brought about by wars, earthquakes, and ironically enough, modern property development. 
But through this virtual walk back in time, you have hopefully seen a city whose history and architectural glamour combine an old world charm with the sophistication of a modern place.